Hi everyone, I'm back with another edition of the American Chess Magazine Puzzle Calendar. Let's get into the puzzles. This is the puzzle for Monday, June 5th. It was composed by Charles Dennis in the year 1921. Again, all the puzzles in this series are white to move, made in two. If y'all try to solve this puzzle for yourself, then go ahead and pause the video here. For me, this puzzle had a difficulty rating of 6 out of 10 and a satisfaction rating of 5 out of 5. Black's king currently has three escape scores, c3, e3, and e5. However, there's also another problem, which is that white's not re really close to threatening any sort of mate. The good news is, though, that is that black's escape scores actually most of them are fake. If the king runs to c3, then white can always play the move queen takes h8 checkmate. Against king to e3, white has queen to g1. However, against king e5, white actually has nothing to do. So right now, white really needs to solve two problems. One, what to do against king to e5, and two, oopsie, two, how to threaten some sort of checkmate. Now, um, after king to e5, if we imagine black plays this move, white looks like they have a few options. Queen, so imagine the king's on e5, queen to e4. However, the problem is that the king can run to d6 or f6. White also might have the option of playing knight somewhere check, however the king has many escape scores. So I started with trying to make queen e4 work. And the easiest way to do that is by playing rook to a6. Now if king e5, then queen e4 is checkmate, and the previous checkmate conditions still hold. However, rook a6 doesn't really threaten anything by itself. If black simply plays something like b3, uh, now if queen takes h8, king to e3. If rook to d6, the king simply runs. If knight takes b3, the king again can run. So because rook a6 is not threatening anything, white actually isn't able to give checkmate. So then white has to find a way to stop king, a different way to stop king to e5. And um, it's hard to directly stop this move. For example, if you try moving your queen somewhere, then you're kind of messing up the e3 and f3 balance. Then I also thought of trying to maybe move the bishop somewhere, but that doesn't really work either. If bishop b8, the king simply takes on c5 and nothing really happens. So then I finally landed upon a different idea. What if I tried to play rook to a5? After rook to a5, if king to e3, the idea is that now I can play knight to e4 checkmate. The knight covers these two escape squares, and the rook gives checkmate. And after rook a5, luckily this is the answer, because white's also threatening knight to e4 checkmate right here. The bishop is uncovered, and um, the e5 escape square is covered by white's rook. This puzzle, I feel like it's the logic process is there, it's just hard to find. You just have to see the move and consider it, then you can find the answer. This was the puzzle for June 6th. It was composed by F. Libby in the year 1901. Again, if y'all solve this puzzle for yourself, then go ahead and pause the video here. For me, this puzzle had a difficulty rating of 4 out of 10 and a satisfaction rating of 4.5 out of 5. So here, white is, um, well, I looked at black's position and I'm like, well, they have no legal moves. The bishop is being pinned, the knight is being pinned. If the knight moves, then queen g3 is mate. So I immediately started thinking of Zook's wall. And since black's only, um, Black's only two legal moves are king e5 and c takes b6. I thought, why don't you just play b7? This move looks like it makes a lot of sense. If black's knight moves, then queen g3 is mate. Black's only other legal move is to play king to e5. However, unfortunately, after queen takes e3, then the king runs to d6. Uh, white has no other checks here. The king always just runs to d6. It's the same problem if you start with b takes c7. Even though black only has one legal move, that's enough for them to run away and escape mate in two. So then I thought, okay, you have to allow c takes b6 somehow. What is this c-pawn guarding? And the c-pawn, the length of the c-pawn's guarding is this d6 square. So I thought of the move bishop to d6. Now the reason that queen, d6, uh, queen g6 isn't correct is because even if c takes or something, then the king simply runs to f5. Oh, actually, hang on. Why has queen f5 checkmate here? So actually after queen g6, what black should do is realize the threat and just play king e5 anyway. Ignore what white's trying to do. Now if queen e4, the king again runs to d6. White needs a non-queen piece to really control this d6 square, so bishop b4 fits the bill. If c takes b6, then bishop d6 is checkmate. If the king runs, now queen takes e3 is mate because the king cannot run to d6. And if this bishop moves, which unfortunately is a new open line, white has bishop d6 mate still. And if the knight moves, then queen g3 is checkmate. This is the puzzle for today, June 7th. It was composed by Yurich Alexiev in the year 2021. Again, if you want to solve this puzzle for yourself, then go ahead and pause the video here. For me, this puzzle had a difficulty rating of 2 out of 10 and a satisfaction rating of 5 out of 5. So I thought, okay, the king is kind of really stuck to the edge, right? I immediately thought of queen to h1. However, worst case scenario, black plays bishop takes e6 and then simply blocks on h3. Then I thought, well, why not try moving the queen to some other square? 
However, now the problem is that even though black has no way to block, the bishop opens an annoying escape square on g8. Then I saw, okay, even if I play queen b1 and take, the king can still run to g8, I realized that allowing this bishop to move is a very big problem. And the only way to really stop the bishop from moving is to play queen to a8. Now if the bishop moves, then queen h8 is checkmate. The king cannot move. If the pawn moves, then white has queen to e4 checkmate. And if black promotes, then white takes checkmate. This is a really cool puzzle with um, that utilizes geometry. So those are the puzzles for this half week. I feel like there was a theme of, again, getting your pieces to the right squares and really trying to move them in unexpected ways to create uh, make combinations. As always, if you enjoy my content, please like and subscribe. And that's all for today. Bye.